Hi folks, I'm John Potoshnik. Welcome to my studio. I imagine many of you are aware of my best-selling DVDs and book. My first DVD, Limited Palette Landscapes, has been a tremendous help to people. For those that are, you know, trying to find their way as painters, this DVD is jam-packed with information and it shows my whole painting process from start to finish. The second DVD, Create Unlimited Color with a Limited Palette, and the book that accompanies it, these take what I taught about color in the first DVD and they expand on it. They, in these products, I present clear, understandable, easy to apply principles regarding working with a limited palette. Uh, I believe in simplicity. Painting is difficult enough without making it more complicated. That's why I'm such a large, uh, huge proponent of using a limited palette. And when I speak of a limited palette, I'm referring to the use of three primaries plus white. And I know that's, uh, that it's really limited and that's probably going to scare some of you um, thinking I can't possibly do a painting with just three primaries. You, maybe you're a person who you can't wait uh, to get to the store quick enough when a new color is released because you're thinking this is the color that I've been needing and this is the color that's really going to help improve my paintings. And so now you have uh, uh, boxes of, of uh, tube colors of paint and your paintings still remain the same. Actually, I'm not, I don't, I don't believe that more color makes for a better painting. I believe um, actually in the opposite. Reducing the number of colors on your palette will, act, will help you to manage your palette better because there's less colors you have to mix, but it also help aid you in creating color harmony, which from what I've heard from a lot of my students, they really struggle with that color harmony. And one of the reasons they're not getting it is they have so many colors on their palette and they're not using them properly. I've taught many students over the years and across the board when they have applied these principles that I teach about it, the use of a limited palette and its positive aspects, they all come back and say this has transformed their painting. They're now excited about painting again and they're making discoveries about color that they never even realized existed. And so, you know, I continue to recommend the limited palette. Uh, particularly for those that are trying to understand color and how to mix it and all the nuances of color. Now you don't have to stay there, but this is where I recommend you start because uh, you can always add color later on. But if you're struggling with color, this is where you need to start. I would recommend cleaning off your palette of all your colors and just going with three primaries until you really experience what a limited palette like this can do for you. I've been using a limited palette in my work for 30 years, and I do add an, another color now and then uh, as I need it. But generally speaking, all my paintings are done with a three primary palette plus white. This particular print here is of one of my paintings, and it was done with a three color palette, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and cadmium yellow pale plus white. So, um, I feel confident that, you know, if I can do it, you can certainly use a three color palette also and be very pleased with the results you will get. We all know what the primaries are, and, but one thing you may not know is that all the primaries are not created equal. Look at this color chart here of all the yellows and the reds and the blues that are available, but they vary slightly. They vary possibly in, in value. They vary in the intensity of the color. They vary somewhat in hue. And they also vary in the temperature of the color. Some are warmer or cooler in relationship to the others that are in that same primary range. You know, primaries are called primaries because they can't be mixed. These are standalone colors. We can't come up with two or three other colors and mix any one of these. You have to have the red, you have to have the blue, you have to have the yellow. So it is really important 
to understand that these these are standalone colors. They are not harmonious with one another. What makes them harmonious is when you start mixing them together. And that's what I teach a lot about the value of using a limited palette. Because once you start mixing primaries together, you create a relationship between those. For example, if we mix the blue and the yellow together here, what are we going to get? We're going to get the complement of green. The minute the green is uh, created, we now have created a relationship between the blue and the yellow. And now they're, they start to combine, and you can do that with each of the other primaries. And before you know it, you have created a family of color, a color wheel, what, what we call it, of 12 colors. All the complements and all the, all the tertiary colors are the colors that are on either side of the complement, all the way around the wheel. That wheel, color wheel now, with using just three primaries, becomes a family of color. And they're all in some ways united and harmonious with one another because of the intermixing. There are so many variations of red, yellow, and blue that people ask me, well, what primaries do I use? How do I select my primaries for a particular painting I want to do? And that's just a great question. And the first part of the answer to that question is that we have to develop a sensitivity to each color's properties. And I want to demonstrate that here with a little chart I've created. So I'm going to take this poster off of here and show you underneath the, uh, what I've done here. And it will help you, it will help explain what I'm talking about. I'm going to spend just a brief time on this because there's other things I want to cover, but this will illustrate the point. Across the top here, we have a, a group of four yellows. Obviously, you can see these yellows here are considerably cooler than these. What makes these warm is that they contain red in them with the yellow, and so they're warmed up. These have a little bit of green in them, and so uh, much less red, and so in appearance with and, and relative appearance to one another, these are cooler, they feel colder than these do. These feel warmer. And it's the same with blues. Even blues have a temperature to them. Uh, I would say that ultramarine blue has a warmer feel to it. I guess we'd look at it here. Ultramarine blue has a warmer feel to it than as we go down to the manganese blue, for example, which seems to have a lot more green in it. So the interesting thing about this chart is that when I use a cool yellow with a with a, uh, a say a, a blue like manganese blue that already has some uh, green in it, you get a really nice string of of the warm greens here compared to the greens that are mixed with a warmer yellow. You can see how great those are because the third primary of red has been introduced into this mix, and so it grays the color. But look at the violets. I think the violets are. A, even uh, more outstanding in their appearance and, and contrast. Here we have four reds, uh, beginning with the quinacridone red and ending with the cad red, and then mixed with those same four, four blues, beginning with ultramarine blue. We have cobalt blue. Um, this is, uh, what is this? <laughs> this is cerulean blue, sorry. And this is manganese blue. But when I mix the quinacridone with the, with the uh, ultramarine blue, look how rich that uh, violet is compared to the cad red mixed with manganese blue, look how dull that violet is. And that's, this is a, all because of the temperature, the, the bias of each one of these colors produce the, all these different violets. So it's real interesting. This violet here is not a bad violet. You got to remember in context with the rest of the pa palette, this violet could be beautiful in context and not look dull at all. But in, in this context with all these others where you're uh, contrasted with some much richer, more intense violets, uh, it looks pretty dull. But in reality, it's not dull depending on what the environment of it is. And then the same principle fo follows if I deal with these oranges down here. You can see some are grayed, much more grayed down. Uh, 
less intense than some of the others, which are much brighter oranges in this case. One of the important lessons I learned, I didn't even know it until I created this chart, was that this quinacridin red is a pretty good all-round red, which I didn't realize before. I always had taught that alizarin crimson is a great uh, cool red to use on a palette, but quinacridin red, if you look across the violets, regardless of the blue they're mixed with, those violets are all beautifully uh, intense and they're, they're wonderful colors. And also as you go down the line mixed with all the different yellows, all those oranges are pretty rich in value. Um, not in value, but in, in color. So, and compared even with the lizard crimson, which I uh, thought before and recommended others to use, those are richer than even the alizarin crimson ones. So quinacridin red is a red that I will consider in the future, and it's something you all might look into also. Now for me, if you're not sure, uh, and this is how I, I solve a problem, if you're, if you're not sure what red, yellow, and blue to use just by looking at the tube colors, my go-to uh, method then after that is to discern what two primaries will give me the complement I want. For instance, if I have a field study or I, I, I'm trying to match a color that I have in my mind or something I see in nature or even see in a photograph and I want to try to get close to that particular color, I will try a variety of primaries, mix them up and see which two primaries will give me the complement I want. For example, if I'm, if I'm looking for a certain kind of violet, I might use uh, two or three different blues with two or three different reds and see when I mix that complement, which, which two primaries give me the complement I want. Once I have discerned that and have found that combination, I then have two primaries that I know must be on my palette. And then the third primary is pretty easy to, to uh, achieve after that. And I want to demonstrate that. This is really what this video is about. I want to show you some colors that I mix and show you how I do it. And uh, I think this will be really helpful to you. So down here, I have a, uh, a photograph. And I want to talk about this first. This, this uh, acrylic palette here, which is clear palette, it comes with the book. And so uh, it's a real handy tool to use in the studio because if you've done a field study and you're now wanting go to translate that to a larger canvas, you can lay this over your field study and you can at least, if nothing else, match your values and your color with that. So it's real handy. So if it's laid over this photograph, for example, uh, I can mix color over here and lay it right on the acrylic palette to see if that color works with what I'm trying to achieve. So the acrylic palette is a great tool. I'm not going to use it for this demo because it creates a little bit of glare, so I'm going to put it aside here, but let's demonstrate here. Here's what I've got. I want to get the overall feel of this green. I've, I've decided this is the green that I want to capture. and so. I'm going to get, try and get close to that. It's going to be hard to match it totally. This is a photograph, and I'm dealing with pigment over here. But I want to get something that's pretty close to that. So how do I do that? So for this exercise, I've just checked, uh, selected two blues, a ultramarine blue and a cobalt blue, and then I've selected four yellows, a lemon yellow, a cadmium yellow medium. You can see the difference, how cool one is, how warm another one is. Then a cadmium yellow pale, which is also warm, and then a cadmium yellow light, which is a warm yellow also, but just lighter in value. And so I've done the same. I've got cobalt blue and those same yellows down here. So I will mix to a green with each one of these combinations, and then from those combinations, we'll try to figure out which two primaries here are the ones that must be on my palette in order to maybe uh, you create this as a painting. So I'm going to take some... Uh, lemon yellow, and I'm going to put some ultramarine blue in it, and we're going to mix it up. And this is how I do it, trying to figure out, okay, what palette's going to work for me. 
So I've mixed up a green. I'm laying it over here. And okay, that's a possibility. I'm going to leave it there. And now I'm going to take uh, the cadmium yellow medium. And I will put some ultramarine blue in that. And you can see the difference. See how much warmer that is? I mean, that's, pretty, that's an intense green here, but this has a lot, seems like it has a lot of red in it. Let's see how that looks. Eh, maybe, it's getting maybe a little closer. So we'll leave that as a possibility. Okay. I'm gonna move on now to the cadmium yellow pale. I'm putting some ultramarine blue in that. See, this is a good, a, a really proof exercise that shows you, hey, just by switching the yellows, because the blues are all the same, just by switching the yellows, look at the different greens I get just from this. So here is a, with cadmium yellow pale, and that just is way off. I can tell right now that is not going to work. So we'll just leave that there as, a, as an example. Now we will take the cadmium yellow light and also put some cobalt, uh, ultramarine blue, sorry, ultramarine blue in that. Look at that, every one of those, every one of those greens is different. Just so, so interesting. And these are things that you will discover when you, uh, start using a limited palette. Well, not too bad. Not there yet. I could maybe go a little darker with that, see if that helps us any. Okay, not quite. It's not quite what I want. Okay, we're going to switch to cobalt now. Try some lemon yellow. Put a little cobalt in it. I think this is going to be way too intense, my guess is. We'll see. Yeah, I'll see how much richer that is. It's, it's, it's too intense for what I really want. So that isn't it. So now we'll try the cadmium yellow medium. This, this has a kind of a cool blue, but it has a, a yellow in it, that, a yellow that is warm. It's, it has some red in it. And so that will neutralize this green somewhat. I'm thinking maybe something like this might be what we're gonna need. think it's getting close maybe I'll try a little more cobalt in that but it's a it's another exercise. yeah it's getting pretty close it's another exercise this is something you just take your time with that's pretty that's getting pretty close so that's in the definitely in the running is one that I'll probably choose we'll see how these others work out Here's a cadmium yellow pale with a little cobalt in it again. See what this yields. I think this is gonna be way too, it's gonna to be like this one up here. It's gonna be not fit at all, but we'll see. I'll put more cobalt in it. And you can see if that one was close, this is way off. So I'm thinking this is not going to work at all. Yeah, and it doesn't, so I'm giving up on that one. So we got one more shot. Let's see what this will do for us. Here's cadmium yellow pale with a little ultramarine blue. Is 
that's pretty rich green. It's beautiful. That's not too bad either. But I think, just based on these mixes here, I'm going to pick this one right here. Cobalt blue with a cadmium yellow medium. That seems pretty good to me as an overall feel. It's not matching this perfectly, but it's pretty close. So I know now that on my palette for this particular piece, if I'm turning this into a painting and I want that green, I know on my palette that I must have cobalt blue and cadmium yellow medium. So the next thing now, we have to discern what is going to be the third primary. Which red is it going to be? I've got two reds here I'm going to put out. One is a cad red and the other I'm going to use the alizarin crimson as a red. It's more of a habit than anything because I like that alizarin as a cool red. But I, as I said, I'm going to try that quinacridone. Okay, so we, we have some hints in here of, of the oranges that we need. So I have to use this. I have to use cadmium yellow medium because I've already said that has to be on my palette along with the cobalt blue. So these two are on the palette already. I've got to decide now which red to use. So I'm going to take some of the cad red and I'm going to mix it, uh, not cad red, the cad yellow, mix it with the cad red. And I'm thinking this is going to be way too intense, but we're going to try it, see what it looks like. Let's see here. How's that stack up with that? You can see the intensity of it. It's really way too bright, isn't it? So that's what I suspected. I'm thinking it's going to be the, uh, I'll take some up from up here. I'm thinking it's going to be the alizarin crimson that's going to give us, because this alizarin crimson has blue in it, we're adding the third primary to the, uh, the yellow and the red, which exists in, in the cad yellow medium. We're now adding the blue that's in the alizarin crimson, and you can ch see the difference and the intensity of those colors. This one's much grayer, which is what I want, I think. And look at that, we're pretty close. So that's gonna be my palette. If I was to uh, work from this as my reference and create a painting from it, I would uh, use cobalt blue, cadmium yellow medium, and alizarin crimson. You know what I'd like to do now is show you some of my paintings and re the, my real life paintings that I've done in which I use a, a variety of different primaries. I think you'll uh, just appreciate what can be done with just three primaries. You know, in, in closing, I want to say there is nothing that replaces mixing color. You just have to mix a lot of color. Reading about color will not give you an understanding of color. It's color mixes or make you more sensitive to color. You have to mix the color. You have to do the work. 
And so I recommend you do that. Painting, uh, paint, you might be, be concerned about wasting paint, but do you want to waste paint or do you want to learn about color? So you're going to, you're going to have to, you know, uh, waste some paint. But what you will learn will more than make up for that. If you currently have a whole lot of tube colors on your palette, my recommendation is you eliminate all of them. Take the, every one of them off of your palette and go to six simple primaries. And I would recommend trying ultramarine blue as a, what I call a warm blue, and then cobalt blue, which is a, more of a neutral blue. Or you could try some of these other blues that I show up here if you would like, you know, like the cerulean and the, and the manganese. You could try those. But I'll just, I'll just recommend right now, use ultramarine blue and cobalt blue and then for your reds, you can use that quinacridone red or the alizarin cr crimson red. Those are cool reds, along with a warm red, which would be a cad red. And then for your yellows, use a lemon yellow and a cad yellow. And just use those six. And then what I want you to do is just start mixing like crazy. Intermix, uh, switch primaries up, mix all that you can and learn about color. Learn what three primaries will do for you. I think you're gonna be amazed. And uh, what I also recommend is when you, when you make up these mixtures, just create a color swatch. This will be a memory for you and you can say, okay, yeah, when I use those three primaries together, look at all these beautiful colors I got. And I think this will be really helpful for you just to keep a record. And then when you find a palette that you're particularly crazy about and you, you feel like uh, you've, you've got a palette that you're probably going to use quite a bit in your painting, then create a color wheel, which is what I've done here. And this color wheel becomes your permanent record. And the, why this is important is, is because you may be switching up your primaries over time using different ones, but when you need a painting that requires these primaries, you have a permanent record. So that if you need to get to yellow green, for instance, you know exactly that you have to have cad yellow and you have to have ultramarine blue to get to that. And so this is a great record to have and I recommend it. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I, uh, I, I, I tried to be clear and make everything understandable, so I hope that came across to you. And uh, I thank you for joining me and I just wish you all the best with your painting. Thank you.